What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. You are talking right now to a freshly graduated Teddy! <laughs> yes, that's right. I got my thesis result back and I have officially graduated from university and I am a bachelor right now. What's up? You cannot imagine how happy I am right now. Like it feels like a weight off my shoulders has been lifted. I feel like I can fly again. So today, as you've probably noticed by the title of this video, I will be drawing a chapter cover from Junji Ito's Tomie. If you've been on the internet for a significantly long time, I'm sure, especially on Pinterest, you would have seen this kind of uh, character floating around, especially in the tattoo department. It feels like one of those images that everyone has seen at least once in their life, whether they know where it's coming from or not. It's kind of like this one tattoo in particular that I didn't know where it was from. I just thought it was like a random, you know, chain heart with like these random anime eyes, but it turns out it's from Hunter Hunter. And it's of one of my favorite characters, by the way, Krolo. And you know, you're just kind of like aware of this image, but you don't really know where it comes from. Junji Ito is also one of those people that draws these images where I'm sure a lot of people know what they are but they haven't necessarily gone further to like research look into you know what is this and I strongly by the way strongly recommend that you do because I was one of those people I was aware of these images I was aware of this art form and it's very 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 recognizable it's very old as well um, it dates back I think to like I think Tomie was written in like the 1980s I'm sure some of you when you see these images are gonna be like oh my god I've definitely seen that but anyway so I've been kind of binging on his work lately and it's been like horrific if you don't know who Junji Ito is he's one of the most probably iconic well-known most popular manga artists out there in the entire world really and he's very popular for his horror works. The first one that I actually read, and I think the first one that a lot of people read, is called Uzumaki. And if that kind of rings some bells and it sounds a little bit familiar, obviously if you watched Naruto as a kid or maybe later on in your life, you will recall that his last name is Uzumaki, which I think, I believe it means spiral. His work is actually referenced a lot throughout like modern day manga and anime, movies, dramas, whatever. I even encountered it recently in Jujutsu Kaisen. Like if you've read the manga you will see there's a reference of Junji Ito's Uzumaki there and that's where it kind of intrigued me I was like okay I have to read this because it's pretty like iconic people talk about it constantly especially in the manga and anime um, community so I was like okay I can't like go on living like this without knowing what it's about I read it Uzumaki first thing I read it oh my god I don't even know how to describe it to you it is absolutely phenomenal it's not I definitely wouldn't recommend it for like how should I say this people that feel kind of queasy when it comes to like horror stuff like if you don't like horror movies you probably won't like this and i know it's like book form but it's very 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 gory like it's very detailed just well drawn to the point where it kind of makes you almost swallow it up so much that you believe it and that's what i love about it it's almost it feels a little bit nostalgic in a sense because when I was like thinking about it later, like when I've been like binging everything, Tomie, Uzumaki, Gyo, uh, what else did I read? Uh, I think Human Chair is what it's called, the recent one that I read. Just a bunch of like of this collection of manga stories, which are by the way, very, very short. I think Uzumaki is the, I think only one. Oh, and Gyo as well that are quite long, I would say. Not really, but you know, compared to some of his other works. It reminds me a lot of, you know, if you were a kid and you watched Courage the Cowardly Dog, literally is pretty much the same thing. I don't know, there's like a nostalgic feeling there for me. I don't know why. It was one of those series that I think left a great impression on a lot of people in the sense that it's very unsettling it's very creepy like some of the villains are really out there and like looking back on them they're very similar to what junji ito draws especially fred from freaky fred uh king ramses from king ramses's curse there's something about the characters that's very like it gets etched into your brain and you just never forget about it and i love it it lives up to its hype and it's been as i already mentioned like so many years and it genuinely has lasted the test of time even recently you know uzumaki it's about like as i already mentioned it means i think spiral and it's about like spirals and nature and just spirals okay i'm not gonna spoil too much go and read it it's amazing what was i talking about oh yeah spirals so 
I've been noticing like a lot of spirals lately. It really makes you become like hyper aware of things and almost paranoid in a way. You know, when I see a spiral, I'll be like, spirals. And then my mom's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> there was also like an anime series that came out, which I think I watched the first episode, barely got through the second one, to be quite honest with you. What Tomie is, by the way, I like forgot to introduce this character to you, is a very beautiful, you know, young high school, I believe, girl that's pretty much a succubus. I don't know if you guys know what a succubus is, but it's like this demon thing that attracts men and makes them go crazy. That's what I would describe her as. There's no like canon description of her. And she basically never dies, even though she dies in pretty much, I think, not pretty much, I'm pretty sure, in every single chapter. So there's no way for her to die. The way she's drawn is also very captivating. Like there's something very eerie about her. I love everything about her character design. I love everything about the way he draws men as well. Like sometimes he makes them look really, really gloomy. And especially in Uzumaki, his eyes, his expression the entire time looks really, really like, like he's dead. But his character is so well written and so well like, portrayed. So Tomie has like this very iconic, which by the way, I'm not too sure why she doesn't have it in this particular drawing. She has this very iconic little like beauty mark underneath one of her eyes. And I actually like I added some eyeshadow to the one that I actually already have. I have one above my lip as well and right below my, what is this, left eye. So I thought it was, you know, kind of appropriate to, you know, channel some Tomie energy, if you will. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It's another plane. So I actually put up a vote for which drawing I would have done. So one of them was like an iconic Uzumaki panel. And then another one was the, the one that I'm drawing now, like the panel from Tomie. If you want to participate in that, follow me on Instagram. Um, that's not to say that I won't do the Uzumaki one, but this one is actually proving to be very, very challenging. I'm not sure why, but it's taking me a very long time to do this. Even though it's black and white, it takes so damn long. I think it's something about the hair that's just very, very, very tedious. I have received, by the way, a couple of requests of whether I'm selling these uh, glass paintings or not. Some of them I am, some of them I think I'll keep for a little bit longer just so I can like, you know, kind of bathe in the effort that I put into them and just enjoy them for a little bit. And then I'll probably sell them. I'm wondering if I should open an Instagram account just specifically for these paintings and sell them there. Yeah, if anyone's actually interested, please DM me. I will sell you some of them for sure. Hi, uh, post filming and editing Teddy here. So after I finished editing like the talking part of the video, I realized that I went in on like the specific subject it was about BTS and Permission to Dance, their new music video. And I kind of went in like too hard on it. I realized after like it was just kind of, you know, I don't like the song. I don't like the video. I don't like anything about it. But it just went in too hard on it for too long. And it was really like negative And I don't really want to put that out there. And I don't know, maybe some people like the song. I don't want to make people feel bad for liking it. Um, so in the end, I'm just gonna delete that entire section of the video. <laughs> like, I'm sorry if any of you were excited to hear my opinions on it, but I just thought it was kind of too much, to be quite honest with you. It was really... I was really going in. Like, <laughs> if that like kind of gives you an idea of how I feel about it, well, there you go. Of course, there is another plane passing by. <laughs> so that aside, I don't like officially have an ending, I think. Maybe I do. That's not like kind of related with the last subject that I talked about. So enjoy the rest of this video if there is a rest of this video.
follow me on all social media. Don't forget to check out uh, last week's video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.